Hey, hey, it's Chrissy again. This is my second video, and like I told you, we're going to go over a lady's numbers. Her name is Chantel. She does have a mortgage, so for Velocity Cash Flow Banking, mortgages and car notes do not allow you to pay with a credit card. There are other options, but what we're going to do in this demonstration is she's still going to be paying it out of her checking account instead of her debit tool, or excuse me, her debt tool. So I'll show you exactly how we do that. First things first, let's go over her six numbers. Her income is $3,900. Her expenses is $3,300. Her total debt is $62,383.59 because that does include her mortgage. Her cash flow right now, her extra money that she has after she pays it, all her expenses is $600. She did receive her debt tool that she's going to be used, which is a credit card. She cannot get approved for a HELOC at this moment. But hopefully by the end of this 14 months that I'm going to show you, she'll be able to apply for either a HELOC or a personal line of credit. So right now we're just going to use a credit card. It's a zero balance. She's at a 0% until November 2021. It's a $20,000 credit limit. And then come, oh, that was wrong. Oh, see, I already made a mistake. Come December of next year, the credit card, if there's a balance on it, it'll start um, charging her 9%. So we want to make sure by the um, end of November that it's down to a zero balance or as low as we can get it. Her savings right now is $6,800. And like I showed in the first video, you do not try really, really hard to not go above 70%. Try to keep it below that on your debt tool because you do not want to max out the credit limit on that. So we're gonna, um, we, we have $14,000 to work with to do her velocity cash flow banking. And like I explained to you is she's gonna be paying her mortgage out of her checking and then everything else is off her debt, her debt tool. So $3,900 is her income. Her checking account is gonna, we're gonna, every month we're keeping in $525 because that's what her mortgage is. It's $524.29. And then also on her expenses includes the mortgage. So we need to take that off as well. So that is the expenses. So here's her income and here's her expenses because we're gonna be keeping in $525 into the checking account so she can pay her mortgage. So let's go ahead and go um, over her debts. She's got three debts she wants to tackle with Velocity Banking. And the first one is the mortgage. She owes $51,878.16. It's at a 5% interest. She probably could refinance right now, but once you pay all the stuff, we're probably better off just leaving it like that and we're gonna to try to pay it off in the next um, about 18 months. So her payments right now is $524.29. Her car loan is five her car loan is $5,294.79. It's a 9% car loan. She pays $246.85 a month on that. She's also got a student loan at 5.5% interest and she owes 52.1064 on that and her student loan is high. Her uh, her payments are $600.11. So we definitely want to tackle that one as fast as possible to free up as much cash flow as we can to pay off that debt tool quicker. So we started in June. Here are the numbers. I'm hoping the numbers are bigger than they were in my first video. So Comment if, if you're having problems seeing the numbers and I'll, I'll actually redo the video if so. So June, what we're going to do is we're going to pay off the car loan and we're also going to pay off the student loan because remember we got $14,000 we can work with so we can max up to $14,000. We're not going to do that right off the bat so we're, I'm going to free up as much cash flow as I can and just to let you know right now, give me one second, I have it over here. Her car loan itself still has 21 months left on it. So it's a ride around between $110 and $111 a month of this payment is going to interest every single month. So, and the student loan, she has nine months left. Almost $200 every month is going into interest. So um, if we pay off those two First, we're going to be saving $2,058 $2, $2, just on the car loan, 
and then we're we'll saving seventeen hundred and thirty seven dollars on the student loan so a little over thirty eight hundred dollars just by paying that off in the first month so I'll show you how we're going to do that so we add, just add up the car loan and the student loan it comes up to ten thousand five hundred and five dollars and forty three cents that will be your balance on the debt tool starting June 1st before we even put any income in before we even pay any expenses anything so what we're going to do and remember this is what we do your income comes in to your checking account and then you pay your debt tool because normal normally what we normally do is our income comes into our checking and then our checking typically pays our expenses. Well, in Velocity Cashflow Banking, what we're gonna do is our income comes into our checking, that's correct, but then we're gonna pay our debt tool, and then our debt tool are gonna to pay all our, our expenses. So at this point, we have a credit card, we're gonna use a credit card to pay all of her expenses, and we check to make sure every expense can be paid with, the, with the, a credit card, and this credit card in, she, in, in the first six months, if we use it the way we were going to use it, she's going to earn about, probably around $900 in cash back alone. That doesn't include any other rewards points. So, um, so she's gonna be paying all of her expenses out of that credit card, okay? So that kind of gives you an idea. I, I know I, we, we went over that in the first video and I didn't write it on the board on this one, but I'll write it right here. It's nice to see how pretty that is, nice and pretty. You can see that. Okay, so that so $10,505.43 is the balance on the debt tool as of June, the very first of June, 2020. Our income is gonna come in, and remember, our income is $33.75 because you have to take the income minus the mortgage. So we're at $33.75, that is our income for June. Our expenses for June is $928.04. And you're probably thinking, no, Chrissy, it's $27.75 is our expenses. Well, when we ran the numbers to begin with, that was correct, which is the mortgage taken out. But we freed up $846.96 in the very first month just by paying off the car loan and the student loan. So this is our new cash flow that we added to her $600. So we do no longer have those expenses. Our expenses now are 1928.04. So if you take $3,300 minus the mortgage that's going to stay in the checking, we're at $2775, and you take $2775 minus $846.96, you get $1928.04. And just to let you know, I'm going to take screenshots probably from now on of the boards, and I'm going to put them in the comments section of the videos so you can kind of blow it up and it'll be a still picture for you. Let me know if you like that, if you don't like that. I just think that that might help because I was taking screenshots of other people's videos to try to figure it out and it just, oh, it drove me crazy. So this way, I'm gonna actually take pictures of this and put in the actual um, comment section of the video. So, so actually, so since, so our expenses, so I always, um, in my paperwork, I always put, we're no longer paying D2 and D3. So the expenses are $19.28, we're down to $9,000. I'm not gonna go with all the pennies and stuff like that to try to make the, um, the video a little quicker, so you'll be able to see. So in July, income comes in. Her income comes in, it's the same, $33.75. Her expenses go out, she pays with the credit card, except for her mortgage, which will stay in the, credit, it will stay in the checking account, she'll pay for it that way. In August, income comes in, expenses go out. Now in August, the end of August, her debt tool was originally 10505 It is now $4,717.59. Remember, we can go up to $14,000. We're trying to pay off debt as fast as possible to pay the least amount of interest to the lenders we borrowed from. So what we want to do is we want to put that $9,000, which will end up being $13,700, $13,717.59. It will still be lower than the 70%, but we're going to put $9,000 right on to the mortgage. No, it's not going to free us up any cash flow, but we're putting $9,000 right to the balance. 
And when you send it to them, whether it's a balance transfer, a convenience check, however we decide to send that money to them, what we're going to do is we're going to put on their principal only. So that way it's automatically knocked right off the... Hey, hey, I'm back. Okay, where did we leave off? Okay, we left off in August that we were going to take the $9,000 and put it right towards the mortgage and I ended with saying that we're going to, when we send it in, we want to put on there, apply to principal only. We do not want them to apply it to the payments because then it might say that you are paid up for so long. We want it to go to the principal only. So, so in August, we're going to add $9,000 to the debt tool balance. That's going to bring us at $13,000. We're going to get paid in September. Expenses come out in September. We're down to $12,000. October, so all I did was take the September Come right up here. This is the September numbers. I just took this number and put it right here. End of September, we're at twelve thousand dollars. We get paid, or she gets paid in October. Then expenses go out in October. Same thing in November. Expenses go out. Pay everything with the credit card except for the mortgage. December expenses come in. Income comes in. Expenses go out in January. Income comes in. Expenses go out. Now remember. Our expenses stay the same because we didn't free up anything. Just because we paid $9,000 to the mortgage, we only made the principal go down. We didn't free up any cash flow. So at the end of January, we were down to $6,482.63. We now I'm going to switch boards real quick. Okay, and on this board, I put the expenses back up here. I did go ahead and write my little velocity cash flow banking, what we freed up, our mortgage and our expenses, and I only put down which debt we have left over, which is the mortgage. Um, I didn't put the car loan or the student loan because we already paid it off. So all I did was transfer the end of January. We we're at $6,482.63. That is the debt tool balance. Our income comes in in February, our expenses go out in February, and now we're down to $5,035 for the debt tool balance, and we can go up to $14,000. So we're gonna do another lump sum payment to the mortgage of $9,000, same thing. We're going to make sure we send it in and put on principal only. So I'm over here, I got this running total for you. It's, we started at 51, 878, 16, we made our first lump sum payment to the mortgage at $9,000 in August. February, when we're going to make another one. So now we're down to $33,878.16. That doesn't even include any payments we've made thus far. So we've been making, you know, she's been making her, she's going to be making her payments on her mortgage. So that balance is going to go down automatically by paying her payments. This is just an extra that it's going to go down. So now we're at March, income comes in. Expenses go out. April, income comes in, expenses go out. And what I did to kind of make it quicker is we know that our income is $33.75 and our expenses are $19.28. That means that we have a cash flow, a freed up cash flow of $14.47 in cash flow. So we know that if we take these two numbers every month, so if we start at a 10, so at the end of April, we're at $10,141 and we're right here at the debt tool. That's our balance. But if we minus $10,141 minus $1447, we come up with June's amount. We haven't, we're not changing any expenses, so we're down to $8,694. Same thing. We minus the cash flow, because we're just putting the cash flow right on the debt tool. June, we're down to $7,200. July, we're down to $5,800. In July, the end of July, we're going to put another lump sum payment of $9,000 to the mortgage. And yes, our debt tool is going to go back up again, and now we're going to be at $13,000, right at the brink, $13,800.63. But our mortgage is down to $24,000, and remember, we paid off the car loan and the student loan. So at this point, I'm recommending that at the end of July of next year, she's going to apply for either a personal line of credit, a line of credit or a HELOC because she's now shown um, in what, um, 14 months that she can definitely 
manage a high limit credit card. So that credit limit might go up on that on that credit card. Not for sure. I can't, I can't say for so certain. But by this time, her debt to income ratio has went down. Her credit score has went up and her income stayed the same, but now we freed up a lot of cash flow. So we should be able to, I'm saying probably around 25 to $30,000 in a HELOC, which is simple interest. And then what we're gonna do is what, when we wanna make sure that we apply for this and get approved before November, so that way we can pay this off, this 13,800 with this HELOC or this personal line of credit, and then our debt tool now is down to zero again no interest is paid, and now we freed up $20,000 that she has on her credit card. Um, so we're down to 20, so you gotta remember too, is we're down to $24,878, but she has paid her mortgage now for 14 months, which is another 3,000 off, about $3,800 actually off of this balance. So her house, her mortgage is now down to $21,000. So actually, she has two different two different options. She can apply if she is denied, which at this point I don't think based on the numbers she's going to be denied, but say she is. All she has to do, she's got $21,000 in a balance is to, to keep doing the exact same thing, paying off and and you got to remember is she's she's still going to have $1400, so she's paying it off so in like 1 year, let me get my calculator really quick. So she's got cash flow of 1447 times 12 months. That's $17,000 in cash flow if she pays it. She's already going to pay this off way before that. So let me see what 13,800 and we're going to divide it by how much money she's got coming in extra a month. It's going to take nine and a half months to pay this debt tool down to zero if she doesn't get approved for this. So, this is it in a nutshell. I'm going, like I said, I'm going to take a screenshot and I will do another video in the next couple of days. Hope you guys have a great day. Happy hump day.